Dit is PNL ETE Papa Alpha 0 Eco Tingo Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag 23 juli 2016. Dit is het bulletin van zaterdag. Het nieuws van gisteren. In deze uitzending Mosse en een SSTV plaatje, of eigenlijk drie korte SSTV plaatjes, die zijn in Robot 36. Je kunt die beelden ontvangen door met je microfoon van je smartphone voor de luidspreker van de ontvanger te gaan. Uh, je hebt daarvoor de app Robot 36 nodig. Dat is iets anders dan de modulatiesoort Robot 36, als je tenminste met een Android werkt. En bij iOS is het een S- is het programma S- Nou, dat gaat niet goed. Is het programma CQSSTV? As always, in weekends, our bulletin is in English. Today, as usual, we will start with the propagation bulletin of the RSGB. In addition to that, the next couple of days until Monday, we have a small item in three episodes on propagation on the HF bands. SSTV images today are supporting that item. Between Morse code's words of today and SSTV, we will have something new. We will send three times HI with a slow speed of 12 words per minute and a higher pitch to separate between Morse code and SSTV. Hello, this is Mike Marsh, G1IAR, and welcome to the TX Talk podcast of the GP2RS National News, applied by the Radio Society of Great Britain and brought to you by TX Factor. Now the radio propagation report compiled by Golf Zero Kilo Yankee Alpha, Golf 3 Yankee Lima Alpha and Golf 4 Bravo Alpha Oscar on Friday the 22nd of July. Well, there was plenty of solar action this week and the solar flux index climbed to 108 on Thursday thanks to a slew of sunspots. Plus, we had incoming plasma from a coronal mass ejection that sent the K-index up to 5 for 9 hours in the early hours of Wednesday the 20th. There have also been some M and C class solar flares to keep us on our toes too. Now, unfortunately, due to the time of year, the increased solar flux didn't really create any enhanced HF propagation, with maximum usable frequencies still languishing around the 15 MHz mark. There has, however, been some widespread sporadic E over the UK, which has helped short skip contacts even on 40 metres at a time when the F layer critical frequency was only around 5 MHz. NOAA is predicting that the solar flux index will decline from around 90 at the start of next week to 70 by the end, and that's presuming that no new sunspots appear. Geomagnetic conditions will remain slightly unsettled with a K-index of 2 or 3. And our best tip for propagation this week is probably wait until mid to late evening. By this time, the harsh summer D-layer absorption will be declining, leaving the 20 metres and possibly 17 metres bands open to DX. And now the VHF and upwards propagation news. It's looking like a week of high pressure nearby in the south, but it'll be fairly weak and likely to weaken further after midweek. Enictropo is more likely early in the week, especially down to the south across Biscay towards Spain and Portugal and on towards the Canaries. The north is likely to be under the influence of low pressure, with showery weather likely to bring some rain scatter on the gigahertz bands and probably in the south later in the week as the high declines. Sporadic E is still prevalent well into August, so plenty of time to check out the activity on 10, 6, 4 and 2 metres for those fleeting QSOs with stations in Europe or beyond. However, Sporadic E does fare a bit better when there are jet streams active over Europe and the next week is not quite so well blessed, with most of the activity being over Britain and Scandinavia perhaps a little bit too close for maximum benefit. Moon declination goes positive again on Sunday, so lengthening moon windows added to perigee and lowest path loss on Wednesday means a good week for EME. Finally, the 28th and the 29th of July brings the Delta Aquarids meteor shower, which lacks a sharp peak and favours the southern hemisphere and tropical latitudes in the north. Look for some meteor rate enhancements an hour or so before dawn. And that's all we've got this week from the Propagation team. From the headquarters of the American Radio Relay League in Newington, Connecticut, this is ARRL The Doctor Is In, a bi-weekly podcast addressing common and some not-so-common technical issues in amateur radio. 
And now, here's your host, QST Editor-in-Chief Steve Ford, WB8IMY, and the doctor himself, QST Contributing Editor Joel Hallis, W1ZR. Hello and welcome to another ARRL Doctor Is In podcast. I'm Steve Ford, WB8IMY. And I'm Joel Hallis, W1ZR. Joel, let's talk about HF propagation. I mean, that's something that you would think would be pretty straightforward for for most people. You get on the air, you turn on your radio, and the bands are good or not so good or whatever to wherever you're trying to get. But it's really, obviously, much more complicated than that, isn't it? Well, I mean, the good news is, it is while it is complicated, you don't really have to know how it works to use it. That's right. It's like swimming. Why is the water holding me up? Well, I don't know, but as long as I'm not under the water, I'm okay. Yes. <laughs> and the propagation is about the same way. It can learn about the physics of the ionosphere and, and how all that works. Or you can turn your radio on, and as you say, if you hear somebody out there and can talk to them, there must be propagation between you. Yes. And if there is, you can have a conversation, and if there isn't, you change bands or change hobbies, briefly. <laughs> and I think that's one of the things that has always been so fascinating about shortwave radio, whether it's listening to international broadcast stations, of which there aren't as many as there were when we started, mm-hmm. are talking to people on the radio, is that it is so variable, and you never know who's going to be there. You know, one minute you're hearing people from the next town, and the next minute you're hearing people from the next other side of the world. Yes. And uh, I think that's that's kind of the interesting thing about it, and, and trying to make your equipment work well under both sets of circumstances, or for whatever objectives you have. And HF propagation via the ionosphere is something that actually, that's sort of the way it, it really worked starting early on, that the early pioneers of radio had no idea how this worked. There were a lot of mental no. models people had, and they'd try things, and if, if they tried them and they worked, they'd keep doing it. And then we, some, we take it for granted. Yeah. We take it for granted that something will happen. But we can't take for granted that, for example, you'll be able to maintain a schedule with somebody in South Africa every day on on 20 meters at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, Mm -hmm. some days it works and some days it doesn't. And you can just accept that and say, well, if it doesn't work today, I'll try it again tomorrow. Or you can try to understand what's happening and predict it. And there are a lot of tools available that can help you do that. I mean, basically what happens is the uh, solar energy from the sun strikes our ionosphere and ionizes the various layers of the ionosphere. And the uh, propagation we mostly use on HF is in the outer layers, the F, uh, F layer, which is the furthest layer from the Earth. In doing so, it passes through the other layers to get there. Mm-hmm. On the um, higher frequency bands, 20 meters and and up through typically 10 meters it passes through the lower layers without any difficulty and gets refracted from the ionosphere and how or what fraction of the energy gets uh, refracted and and what frequencies are supported is very dependent upon how heavily ionized it is which is dependent upon how much energy comes from the sun right which is different depending on the sunspots and and where we are in the sunspot cycle and particular day and how many sunspots are there that day Mm -hmm. or more probably that week it it, it doesn't tend to uh, rapidly change The other thing that happens is, in addition to the solar energy, there's magnetic energy from the sun that can cause uh, attenuation and noise in the ionosphere. Yes. That gets in the way of communication. So both of these things going on, and they're all measurable and recorded, and the numbers are available at different locations on the Internet. So we can actually use that data to make predictions. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's something you can do if you don't want to just take chances on when you're going to be able to talk to somebody. You can actually uh, use that kind of software to predict when Mm -hmm. you will be able to make contacts and, and what the probability will be of being able to get through. The one I like and use the most is something called um, VOACAP, VOCAP. Yes, I've heard of that one. Yeah, and the VOA stands for Voice of America. This was put together at taxpayer expense to help the Voice of America oh, good. be able to predict what it was doing. And it's online at uh, VOACAP.com, I think. And it's all available right there. It actually takes in, has its own uh, source for the numbers. You don't have to put in the sunspot numbers or the A or mm-hmm. K indices or any of those other things. It's looking at predictions for the current kind of month in that time frame. Yes. Uh, so if you want to know what's going to happen next February, uh, you need to have other information to put in there. But if you want to know what's going to happen today or next week, you can use it as it is. You can put in your transmitter station parameters, your antenna type, your power, put in the information about where the other station is that you want to work, a de-expedition or another rear country that you're looking for. Mm-hmm. And it will tell you the probability of being able to make contact each hour of the day on each band. But it's a probability. It's a probability, like weather forecast. 
forecasting. It, you know, it's it's a 70% likelihood of rain. Well, is it going to rain? Well, who knows? If it if it rains, the guy was right because he said it was a 70% probability. <laughs> if it doesn't rain, the guy was right because there was a 30% probability that it wouldn't rain. <laughs> Same sort of thing. But it gives you some information, some insight. Yes. The best that can be made um, without taking your own data between those locations at that moment. Mm -hmm. So it gives you an idea. Instead of listening all day long, hoping to hear this person, you can say, well, at this hour, I'm going to listen on 17 meters, and then Mm -hmm. a little later, I'm going to listen on 20 meters, and so forth, and that'll give me the best shot of getting there. Now, of course, that doesn't say the person is actually going to be there at those times. That's something that's out of the propagation prediction (laughs) and control. But but if you have a de-expedition, they'll probably be operating on the frequencies that the bands are open to different parts of the world. Yes. And so you have a good shot of, of being there. So it tells you when you can sleep and when you should be up and that sort of thing. So it's all, <laughs> all kind of a general rule without the benefit of propagation forecast software is that the best shot is with both pa- ends of the path in common sunlight. So that means it, it has to be daytime where you are and daytime where the other end is. It doesn't uh-huh. have to be, but that's a good time, good chance that that will work because the sun ionization of the ionosphere will occur across the path. Mm-hmm. Now that could be the direct path or it could be the path around the back, the uh, long path could be in common sunshine, although that's less likely because it's further apart usually. Now, are we talking about the higher frequencies of this? The Captions for the SSTV images are for the first one, relationship of the atmosphere versus the ionosphere. For the second one, layers of the ionosphere. And for the third, electric currents created in sunward part of the ionosphere, where the left part is the illuminated part and the right is the night segment. Estefe. Este fe. Este fe. Daily Minutes zijn dagelijks om 1900 uur te beluisteren op PI2 NOS en ochtends om half elf. Aanvullende informatie bij de uitzendingen is te vinden op www.pa0ete.nl. Wil verder gerust je tips, commentaar en desnoods priet praten naar xapenstaartjexdv.me. Wat een saaie uitzending was dat toch weer. Break, break, breaking news. 
my goodness. Het nieuws, het nieuws, het nieuws van gisteren.